Welcome, welcome, welcome for Best Music Coach. My name is Dan and you are watching a music teacher's reaction to the Final Fantasy VIII original soundtrack. I've never heard this before in my life. I never have. So everything I say, do, talk about, teach, breakdown will be off the top of my head in the moment as we go. Stick around and find out. See what happens. Now make sure you hang out all the way to the end of the stream for my final reaction and summary. You don't want to miss it. Also, there may be some food metaphors along the way if you're lucky. And even if you're not lucky. So let's start this off with Liberi Fatali. Not to be confused with when you were a child and you didn't want to go to the library. Here we go. Look, I have no, <laughs> I'll have a lot more to say after I can compare that to other things and then I'll start making some connections. But first of all, wow, what an absolute knock your socks off piece of music. I mean, incredible energy. Look, even like, like this is the most metal timpani. I think if it's so timpani, that these big sort of like kettle looking drums, they look like they're uh, brass made. They are made out of brass. Anyway, it's like, it's like the most shredding metal timpani I think I've ever heard. Plus, it is metal. It's a gallop. It's actually metal. What they're doing, what they're doing they're, you, you, it's metal in an orchestra is what's happening. Now, the gallop, by the way, the gallop in metal, it's a specific rhythm. goes That's the gallop. And then you could hear the metal gallop here in the orchestra.
I like this moment right here where it's like, rah, 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 and then you can hear the xylophone over here too in your right ear, just like, bah, 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 bah. Anyway, the most metal piece I've heard in a long time that had no guitars, drum kit, or electric bass that I could hear anyway. Very, very metal. Very, very hard. It's like, oh, you think the music you listen to is hard? Check this out. Very hard. Very cool. This one is called Balam Garden. I was like hinting at Aerith's theme there. It's like the same chords as Aerith's theme. What does this song have to do with Aerith? Nothing. Gardens and flowers. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that. I was going to say, yeah, Bex, exactly. Okay, so what's really interesting is, look, there are some consistent ways which all composers can translate certain emotions that we've sort of accepted that have become, become emotions or associated with emotions. It's like a lot of times when we're on these streams, I'm like, all right, does this sound like, well, let me give you a real example. So how about like a minor four, six chord to one. So we're in the key of, oh, let's say G major. And then if I play this chord. It's got a very particular motion to it. And I think what's interesting here is this started out and I was like, oh my goodness, this is about to turn into Aerith's theme. Uh, 
like do ba do ba do shiki di da, right? Thinking that's going to go into Eris theme, and it doesn't. So what that is is, as Bex put it, it's a nobuo ism. It's that. Nobuo Uematsu has this way of translating a certain emotion. It's like this caring, gentle, loving space, right? And that's why I was thinking it was Eris theme is because he understands how to create that emotion. He was getting a similar vibe of that emotion from Aerith's theme here, even though it's not Aerith's theme. And that's why if you've listened to a lot of Final Fantasy VII, you might have heard this and gone, ooh, this is about to be Eris theme, and it wasn't because it's a similar emotion, a similar feeling that the composer is giving you. Also, want to give a shout out and a thank you to a very generous super chat from Megawatt. Megawatt, thank you so much for your support and for your super chat. This next one is called Blue Fields. And before I go in, uh, someone made a great point mechanical. Maniacal Foreigner says, with how much music Nobuo writes for games, there are bound to be some similarities. I agree. I agree. And I think that there's nothing wrong with there being a similarity. Just because something's similar doesn't make it less than, doesn't make it worse. It just makes it similar. It just, it's just a fact of what it is. It doesn't make it good, doesn't make it bad. It just is similar. All right, that's a loop. So guys, anytime, anytime there's a loop in a song, please feel free to let me know because I want to talk about things. So look, the in my opinion, and this is just like a little music nerd thing, one of the coolest thing about this song is the use of double reeded instruments. Now what a double reed is, it's like you get, imagine two very thin pieces of bamboo that are held together with a piece of string and that's what the person is blowing through who's creating the sound. Now, I'm not saying that they're using live instruments here because it sounds to me like some of these are, um, it seems to me that there's a mix of live and uh, digital. I'll try and pick up a little bit more because that's not what I've been listening for. But check out this one thing here. It sounds to me like it goes bassoon, English horn, then oboe, if I'm not mistaken. This is just the coolest thing. Just double read, double read, double read. Wait 
for it. Okay. Oh my gosh. That right there is just the coolest. That's just the greatest. Let's listen to that again. Ah, uh, no, that actually sounds to me like it's going oboe clarinet. Uh, oboe? Is he, uh, yeah. Hang on. Bassoon, clarinet, oboe. I apologize. <laughs> Oh, so cool. And they all come together. All right, which kind of uh, takes away from my whole story about the three double woodwinds. But still, three three woodwinds, two double reeds, one single reed. The clarinet doesn't have two pieces of thin bamboo stuck together. He says one piece of bamboo stuck on either metal or plastic or indeed wood on the other end. So you have one vibrating reed as opposed to a double reed. Just a beautiful, beautiful moment here where it gets passed along. Let's listen to it one more time. Here it is. <laughs> but shaka da ga, love it. Love it. So cool. Such a beautiful moment. Uh, this next one is called Don't Be Afraid. Ah! Loop there. Thanks, Lior. Okay, so a couple thoughts. Number one, we've seen a couple things where it's like, uh, uh, that kind of a pattern in, in different things. I messed up in there. But look, point is, we have a pattern that we've seen a couple times in a couple different songs for where it goes one, two, three, down one, then one, two, three, down one, then up three, one, two, three, down one. One, two, three, why not? Like that. We've heard that pattern a couple times in a couple of, in a couple different songs. On top of that, We've also heard a lot of syncopation. Now I'm gonna break down for you real quick what syncopation is and then I'll point it out because I am very confident we're gonna hear it again considering how much we've heard it in the first four songs. So what syncopation is, it's any time the expected pattern of the music is broken up on purpose. So the expected pattern is like, 
If you like, you nod your head up and down where I'm nodding my head, which is probably where you want to nod your head. That's the expected pattern, right? See right there how I'm changing up the pattern? So anytime you change up the pattern, that's going to be called, well, change up the expected pattern, to be clear. And again, it's a very, very high level definition. We're not talking about specifics about what actually is going on in the music. It's called syncopation. So we're going to look out for syncopation, and we'll look out for groups of three and then descending by one. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. We're going to be looking out for those as we move forward with the winner, the winner, chicken dinner. All right, Luke, so, look, while there wasn't any direct syncopation in the large parts of what's going on, the marimba part, which is that sort of wooden sound in the back in your right. Oh, left, sorry. Oh, it's also the right. So don't bone think it don't good don't kink gun don't bone think it don't good don't kink gun. That part of the magic that don't go think good don't but don't kink right there. The don't don't bone think good don't but don't think gun. You see how I'm saying it before I clap? So look, don't boom think gun don't right there. That syncopation is breaking up the expected pattern. Don't boom think good don't but don't think gun. Little touch of syncopation in there. This last one is called find your way. And just to be clear, syncopation usually happens everywhere. In fact, if music wasn't syncopated, you'd probably think it was pretty boring. Like if we go, Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb, its face was white as snow. You either just left the stream, or if you're still here, if, if you're still here, you're either asleep, bored, or wishing I was doing something else, right? Because it's very boring music. But if I go, Mary had a little lamb, a little lamb, a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb, its face was white as snow. Arguably still not something you're going to listen to on your spare time, but I think you'll agree with me, significantly more interesting than the first version I played. Okay, this next one is called Find Your Way. Ah. 
syncopation all day, baby. Alright, that's a loop. We're gonna go back and check out this syncopated part here. But I'm not just gonna spend the whole stream talking about syncopation. Or maybe I am. Stay tuned and find out. Look, this part right here. Expected pattern. Here it goes, bum, 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 ba -dum. Right there, so every time I'm saying a bum, but I'm not snapping, so look, the first two, bum, sorry, the first one, bum, 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 ba -dum. It starts and ends with the expected pattern, but in between, it's off the trail. That's part of what makes it interesting and so cool. Hey, let's keep this going with C D. really really appreciate you confirming when things loop because I don't know I cannot see the future while well, I can hear places where it sounds like it's looping some songs might not loop and I don't want to be the guy who pauses the song in the middle of the song no pause round here which interestingly enough is a paw joke also known as a dad joke okay uh, very interesting piece that was uh, very military, very foreboding. Uh, it sounds to me like perhaps that's the um, that's the intro to perhaps the big baddie, the big bad place, perhaps, uh, or just something really bad happening. But because of the military thing, that's probably something we're gonna have to fight against. So that's that's what I would guess is happening right there. 
Let's check out the next one, which is called A Big Mission. Okay. Next one is called The Landing. Oh, this is so cool. Come on, drop it. Come on, drop it. Oh, cool. So look, if you're wondering why I'm going, I want to live in America, I want to dub in America, eating lime pickle in America, I know that didn't work out with the solos, but look, point is, what you have here, essentially, if we're going by those sort of ideas of I want to live in America, is one measure of six, eight, one measure of three, four. Because you're going one, two, three, four, five, six, one, and two, and three, and one, two, three, four, five, six, one, and two, and three, and one, two, three, four, five, six, one, and two, and three, and one, two, one, two, three, one, and two, and three. So look, that rhythm right there is really fascinating on so many levels. Number one, we could call it a hemiola, technically. Now, number two, uh, just to think about it, essentially what you have is you have six, eight, and then three, four. Now, if you're good with math, you might be going, well, six, eight, three, four, those acts are really the same things. You know, just six divided by two, eight divided by two, right? Three, four, six, eight. But here's the thing. It's actually not the same thing. Six, eight has two beats in every measure, and each beat is divided into three, count them, three equal parts. Whereas three, four has three beats in the measure divided into two equal parts. So it's actually inverse of each other. One has two beats, each of those two beats with three divisions. And then the other one has three beats with two divisions. So you have one, two, three, two, two, three, one, and two, and three, and one, two, three, two, two, three, one, and two, and three, and. A really fascinating rhythm, which I think you can find out all over the place. I think we heard some maybe in Final Fantasy VII. We might have heard them in Pirates of the Caribbean. You might have heard some in Undertale. It's everywhere. It's everywhere, man. It's like, you know, 
you've got the six eight guys and the three four guys, and they're just sitting up in their ivory towers, man, and they're just putting six eights and three fours out into the world, and we just gotta live with the man. This one's called Starting Up. Under that Start Me Up, excuse me, by the Rolling Stones. This one's just gonna be Starting Up by the man, the myth, the legend, the genius, Nobuo Uematsu. Ha! Act Esper says six eight is the cool three four. Them's fighting words, Act Esper. I don't know who told you that was a thing. Is the cool three four. All the cool kids, all the kids sitting at the cool table are they're playing music in six eight. Yeah, bass. I was hoping for the beat and dagger right at the end. So look. What a sweet little riff in there. Okay. This one is called Force Your Way. Use the force. It's like hitting a womp rat. Here we go. Syncopation. Yeah, we're gonna go back and explore some things here. 
first of all, can we all just appreciate how well, look, number one, how well Nobuo understa- understands the role of each instrument that when it comes time to actually physically program them into a computer software, he's making it happen, like rocking and rolling. Like when the guitar was doing those whammy bar bends. Like right there. Bow. Let's see, do I have a guitar with a whammy bar on it? No, that's in play. Oh, yeah, I do. All right, hang on. Ah. All right, so look, how he's doing that, or how one would do that. Now, keep in mind that this this is actually a jazz guitar that typically would not do what we're about to do, but... Bum. See if you can hear it. Oh, just pop that string off the thing. Man, I have not played this guitar in ages. It's dusty. All right. Sounds a lot cooler when you put distortion on it, but look. So that's what's happening there. That's that's the whammy bar action. But then after that, going burning, 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 burning is like so amazing too because the way the guitar actually sounds. You can even hear, you can hear that it sounds like a guitar attacking. So, very cool. Now, let's see, let's keep the thing rocking and rolling. And check out the next fun, which is called Salusa. And not what I appear to be. You know, one of the really cool things about Nobuo Uematsu is that it's like a lot of people will be like. And then go back home. But not Nobuo Uematsu. He's like, here's what you think it's going to be. And here's what it really is and just changing things up and never staying too long in a pattern. It's like he'll he'll dip into a pattern and then just rock and roll and move on to the next thing, which is so cool. It's not better or worse than just staying in a pattern, by the way. There's, there's no right or wrong answer here. It's all about the artist, the composer, and what they want to do. Very cool. Yeah, the Stand By Me prelude version, right. Now come, land is dark and the moon is the only light we see, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I won't. Right, and so look, we could actually go back and look at that one moment and loser and sing Stand By Me over it, but only for a moment. Land is dark and the moon is the only light we see. Well, you know I won't. Right. And then it changes. Okay. This next one is called Never Look Back. Because if you did, something might be behind you. Ah. Okay. Never Look Back. 
Oh, there's a literal Stand By Me version? Well, there you go, that's why. <laughs> that's funny. I'm just gonna pause for a second. I can't believe that Nobuo Ematsu would steal the idea of Big Shot from Toby Fox. That's a joke. That's a joke. It's orchestra hits. It's the same sound as Toby Fox used, most likely inspired by hearing Nobuo Ematsu use it. Oh, I love this like, spy theme percussion, the triangle. There you go. So the whole thing here <laughs> whole thing is that those bing bong bong bing those orchids, those are syncopated, quite a few of them. Against the pattern, that's what's part of making the music so exciting to listen to. It's like if you think about it this way. If every day was sunny and 70 degrees, would you really appreciate it when the weather was bad? And if you live in San Diego, don't answer, because I don't want to hear it, you nice weather-living people out in San Diego. Anyway, this one is called Dead End. Well, Maniacal Foreigner says, I don't know what the time signature was for the last one, and I don't care. But I'll tell you what, I'd like to know, because i got to be honest with you guys, I wasn't moving around too much while that piece was playing, and you want to know why? Because my brain was on overdrive. I was like, what on earth is the pattern of the rhythms here, and how can I quantify it to express it through language? 
Because look, music is music. You could just say, look, it's this thing, and then you repeat the thing. But to actually quantify it into language, ooh, that'd be a cool thing to do. So first of all, that's the start of Crosstown Traffic by Jimi Hendrix. Right there. Da -ba -da -da -ba -da -ba -da -da -da. Right? Or am I kind of misremembering that? Anyway. Look, we can just count it as four. Look, we can go like this. Check this out. Three, four, one, two, 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 three, four. But inside of what's going on, it doesn't feel like four, four. Or maybe that's just my ears. Maybe maybe my ears are on vacation today. I don't know. You know what it is? It's it's syncopation via accents and like the sixteenth notes. Yeah, that's what it is. So it's syncopation at this very, very small level. It's like if you were on Google Earth, it's like zoomed all the way in. So you can see your driveway. It's like going all the way in, all the way into the very, very small, small rhythmic durations of the music, very small divisions, the subdivisions. Lear of Artists is more like 8, 8, and 4, 4 with those middle tunes. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, especially because of that little, like, little, little bit at the end there, which I've only ever seen 8-8 eight, eight one time, and that was on a live chat. I forget what stream it was in. Someone was like, I'm doing this piece in school, and it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. I was like, show me, because honestly, I'd never seen a piece in 8-8 eight, eight before. They showed it to me. It's like, oh, okay. And it's like, the only time you'd use 8-8, eight, eight, so Here's the thing about 8-8. Eight, 8-8, eight. Eight, eight, you can divide any way you want. It's carte blanche. Like, you do whatever you want with it in terms of, like, the metric hierarchy, where the strong beats are, where the weak beats are. But there is one way in which 8-8 eight, eight is done and has been done a couple of times, and it is. It sounds like two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. And it sounds like a measure of 6-8 followed by a measure of 2-4 is what it sounds like when 8-8 eight, eight is done sometimes. Right, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Yeah, exactly, Lee. Yep, and that that's that's the only way I've ever seen 8-8 eight, eight divided, is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. But it's more than, yeah, that's the way you do it, but here on this piece, It's like 14, 8. Come here and 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, and 2, and 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, and 2, and 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, Oh, well, Danvar, if we count it your way instead of going one and two and, oh, indeed, I apologize. I was miscounting. That's right. It would be 16-8. Right. It would be 16-8 because of the eighth notes. I wasn't counting the eighth notes. I was counting the beats of the 2-4 measure that I was making up in my See, we're getting down a rabbit hole here. Well, I tell you what, let's just listen to the next one, which is called Breezy. <laughs>
Dear Prudence. Beatles, Dear Prudence. NBC All right, I submit to you that Breezy is inspired by the song Dear Prudence by the Beatles. You can find that on the White album, also just known as The Beatles. Danvar asks, what scale is this using? Well, let me get in tune. It's using basically D major. but playing around with some notes from outside of the scale. Let's check out this next one, which is, and then I just saw Julia, which is track number 20. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that Nouveau has listened to the uh, White Album a lot on this one. This one is called Shuffle or Boogie. Are we going to five, buddy? set up. <laughs> okay, shuffle or boogie. Ah, very interesting. So, boogie would be a shuffle. Now, people are, people are asking, what's that twangy, the boingy boing instrument? Sounds to me like a sitar, midi, a midi sitar. That's then, uh, yeah, made a little more extra buzzy. But yeah, sitar, definitely. Oh, that right there? That's probably supposed to be a mouth harp. Yeah, it sounds like a mouth harp to me. Have you ever seen it? Is a yeah, jaw harp, mouth harp. Yeah, yeah. You people they put it in there like this and go, oh, wah, 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 jaw harp. Yeah, thank you. 
Next one is called Waltz for the Moon. Oh, I didn't even explain to you what a shuffle is. Shuffle, technically speaking. All right. Shuffle's pretty interesting. I'm just writing a whole chapter on this in my new book. Shuffle's really cool because... All right, shuffle's technically in 4-4. And technically speaking, when you do a shuffle, every single beat is divided into a triplet. And just like swing feel, jazz feel, every person's shuffle can be a little different in terms of like down to like, you know, the milliseconds of it. Tens of milliseconds of difference in where the rhythms are placed result in a different feel. Now, what's really cool is that not everyone knows that a shuffle is technically supposed to... Ah, Danvar, we're getting there. So not everyone knows that technically speaking, a shuffle is in 4-4 four, four, and every single triplet must be written out. And so to compensate for that, a lot of times when you see shuffles, you will see them actually written in 12-8 because that also saves you the time of writing the triplets. Every single thing, and it's a lot easier to read. It makes a lot more sense. So while technically speaking, a shuffle is not in 12-8, a shuffle is in fact in 4-4, a lot of the times you'll see shuffles written in 12-8 because it's a lot easier to have other people who are not maybe hip to what a shuffle would be like. If you wanted to give someone who's never played a shuffle in their life to shuffle, you could give them a piece in 12-8, and they'd shuffle. An interesting little tidbit there. Uh, this next one is called Waltz for the Moon. By the way, can I tell you what my favorite, one of my favorite songs of all time is, which you've not listened to it, I recommend going to listen to. It's Waltzing Matilda. It's a really silly Australian song, and it's just amazing. Waltzing Matilda, check it out. Okay, so there's thing I want to point out. Have any of you ever heard The Blue Danube by Strauss? So I'm singing it terribly. Excuse, excuse the terrible singing. I'm not audiating good. Bum, bum, paraphrasing. Stomp, bum, 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 stomp, bum, 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 stomp, 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 bum, 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 stomp, bum, 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 right? That one. And sorry for the terrible singing. Look, that tempo change that happens in that piece is like exactly the same thing as we can hear here. So very cool inspiration, most likely, if I had to guess. For Nobuo Uematsu. This next one is called Tell Me.
Oh, hang on, we've heard this theme before. Oh, it's in the Bowen Garden? Okay, thank you. That little element there. This next one is called Fia. 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 That's not what it's called. Fia. So I'm going to actually talk over this next half of the loop and point some things out. So part of what's making this so like sleuthy, sleuthy is the those little figures on the hi-hat that it's, the drums are not playing the whole time. There's coming and going. And then these chords that are voiced very close together. And so part of what's making this sound so sleuthy, number one is the instruments, because we've heard a lot of these instruments and these types of chords used in spy movies and spy TV shows in spy audiobooks, and indeed, I believe those are all the, uh, those are all the, I'm sure there's spy VR experiences that have this as part of the, a part of the sound. But the point is, it's like, we get culturally conditioned, huh, which is fascinating. We, we have a music cultural conditioning of like, this sound equals sneaky. Isn't that wild? Huh. So cool. This one is called The Man with the Machine Gun, but I heard from chat that no one really wants to listen to this one today, so I think we'll just skip and go straight to Julia. What, what do you guys think? 
type a one if you think we should just skip it for today and just, you know, move on. Yeah. 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 I, I'd see. Yeah. Bex feels very strongly about skipping it. Uh, Okay, all right, let's listen to it. The man, the man with the machine gun, here we go. That's a lip. We're gonna let it play though. Alright everyone, if you're not in a public place, dance like a Muppet with me. You know, I can't name them off the top of my head, but like there's so many sounds and licks from like dance tunes. Like this one right here. Like, oh my gosh, what is that song? And the bass sounds like it too. Oh, I can't, I cannot think of the song, but there's a song that was like literally that with that bass. And I cannot think of the name of it. And then even from the beginning. Oh. Like this is a really good dance tune. People call this arcade. I call this dance music. I mean, they, they, this, they, this is this is clubbing music for me. Like except for here. Ha! Huh. T Mac has got jokes. T Mac says, "Are you thinking of, uh, are you thinking of the man with the machine gun?" That's pretty funny. But there's some tune out there. Someone's gonna recognize this. I don't know the name of it, and I also can't hear past this part in my head. There's some song out there that's like a dead ringer for that. If you can think of it, let me know in the comments or pop it in the chat. I'd love to hear from you. This next one is called Julia. So I sing a song of love for Julia. Let's check it out.
That was beautiful. Let's talk about why that was beautiful. Not just me just saying it's beautiful. So number one is the speed. It's not going very fast. It's taking its time. Number two, it's where... So part of it's also the the chords as well. Ah, oh, sorry. Is that the chord progression for and the same key as Journey? Ah, uh, no, it's different. But similarly to Journey, because that song's also in E, it goes to the. Beautiful. Ah, loved it. Okay, this next one is called Roses. Those days of roses and wine. Sorry. Wine and roses. No, it's roses and wine. That's a real jazz tune. Check out Days of Wines and Roses. After the stream, you'll see it's a real song. By the way, whenever I'm singing songs and you're like, what is he doing? I'm referencing real music, by the way. Some of the time. Next one's called Roses and Wine. Let's check it out. Can I just take a moment and say how much I love every single one of you on this channel? 
for showing up and just playing along and that we can all have a sense of humor. It's it's amazing. I so appreciate it. Loving it. There's some interesting moments in here where I would have thought the melody would have moved, but it didn't. Let's check it out. Yeah, supposed to be double bass, stand bar, acoustic bass, upright bass. tell you what that's a really interesting melody against those chords it's almost like either the melody was created and then some put chords to it and was sort of like these are gonna be the chords gonna be the melody and we're not really gonna worry about like hmm convention maybe or the second option is that the melody or chords or both or neither uh, were created using some sort of like algorithm, like compositional algorithm or something. Very interesting. This one is called Junction. That's what it sounds like to me anyway. We're at the end, we have the Bogu da du da da. We have the down one, up three. Right there. What a mysterious junction. I don't really know what to do with that piece of music, so I'll tell you what. Let's go to the next one, which is called Timber Owls. Now make sure you hang out, because we're going to have a bonus track today we're going to listen to. Pikachu upvoted some bonus tracks from the Black Mages, so hang out. All right, so this is what we thought was going to be Aerith's theme. Love it. I'm going to get our bonus track set up. Huh. 
like right here, it's like Aerith. This is Aerith. Now it's changing. I think that's a loop. Correct, chat? Alright, that's a loop. So, hey, we're going to go listen to some bonus tracks from Black Mages. We're going to listen to the Black Mages, Force Your Way. We'll check that out for a bit, and then we'll check out the man with the machine gun. Alright, here we go. Let's see if I can route this audio through to you guys. You guys hear that okay? Type a one in the chat if you can hear it. Can you hear it? Type a one in the chat if you can hear it. One, thank you. Let's check out Man with the Machine Gun.
I will say I preferred the original of that one, but I did like the Force Your Way of the Black Mages very, very much. Hey, before I do my final reaction and summary, if you want to understand more about how music works, you want to actually see like what I'm doing, like what I'm doing and how I'm breaking music down, but at a whole deeper level, because right now I'm just doing it like really high level stuff. You want to actually get into it, maybe even learn how to write your own music. I've got a free Facebook group for you. I just put the link in the chat. Go ahead and click on that. Also put the link in the comments. Come hang out. I do free lessons there every week. It's amazing. It's so cool. And then if you're interested in actually learning how to write, read, understand music, I'm here to help you. So go ahead. I'm going to put that link one more time in the chat. Click on that if you would like to understand more about your favorite music, maybe even write music yourself a little bit. Come hang out. Free Facebook group. So, guys, final reaction and summary. I think, wow, it's, it's so different from Final Fantasy VII. I will say, I don't understand fully what you guys mean. All right, so I put a poll up at the beginning, and I said, which music is better? We had 31% for Final Fantasy VII. Third here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end the poll now so everyone can see it in chat. So, let's look at this. Final Fantasy VIII. 37% people say they prefer the music, or they think the music's better. Final Fantasy VII Remake, 31%. Final Fantasy VII, 30%. What I find to be fascinating is that more of you didn't prefer the Final Fantasy Remake or Final Fantasy VIII. I mean, I think they're both incredible. You know, each one has their time, right? And how can you can judge two different things against their time? This is really, really amazing music. I'm surprised more of you didn't like Remake than this. But I'm loving this. I'm also loving, too, you can hear that Nobuo is, like, purposefully trying to do new things. And this is not, he's not going back to just recycling the same thing. He's like trying for new ideas, trying to create new things, trying to, trying to go to new ground. And it's so cool to hear someone do that. And I'm really, really enjoying it. And I'm also really excited for part two. So make sure you hit like, subscribe, crush that notification bell so you come back for part two. And... Again, if you want to understand more about your favorite music, actually how to write it, read it, there's a link in the chat. Go ahead, click on that. Come hang out with me. It's my free Facebook group. Thank you all so much for watching. We're going to read some super chats now and get rocking and rolling with that. So, Pikachu says, this is the two bonus tracks I sent over, Dan. You got it, Pikachu. We did it. Thank you. Bubba. It says, hi, Dan. I've watched all of your reactions. This is my first time chatting. Final Fantasy VIII is my most nostalgic Final Fantasy game. Love what you do. Keep it up. Please put this towards They're arguably the best in the series. Oh, Final Fantasy VI. You got it. Roman202 says, hey, Dan. Sorry I missed the past few streams. Been real busy. Glad you've been busy. I need to tell you about Pizza Tower. The game's music is incredible. Really funky, but also metal, if that makes any sense. Put this to Pizza Tower because you need to hear it. Well, oh, Rubberman, I'm not sure if Pizza Tower is on the list, but if it is, we'll put it on. If not, I'll follow up with you about getting with something that's on the list. Megawatt says, Hey, Dan, I mainly lurk, but I've been watching many of your streams since you covered the Celeste OST, and I'm excited at the prospect of you covering Umaniko as well. Big eyes. Put this towards Umaniko OST. You got it, Megawatt. And Megawatt, thank you so much for coming out of your lurking to share a moment, and thank you very much for your generous support. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your generous super chat there. Musomania27 says, first time catching you live. Welcome. Appreciate your work. Learn a lot about soundtracks. I'd love for you. Is putting this towards Streets of Rage series. You got it, Muso. Fat Music says, teach soon. Advice for kids learning music in 2023. Teach soon. Advice for kids learning music in 2023. What age are the kids? Would be my first question. Fat music to give you good advice. T Mac one three one three says, I'm "Gonna listen to Force Your Way again after the stream. This goes to a Sonic Adventure. You got it." Let's see. We're gonna look out for a follow up from F A T T. Fat music. Reload P S I. Hey, reload. Reload says, Eden Prime from Final Fantasy XIV, a version of Force You Way. We'll put your vote towards Final Fantasy XIV. Reload. Pikachu says, I'll also vote Sonic Adventure. Get to the next voting poll. You got it, Pikachu. 
Erdman says Pizza Tower used a lot of the big shot sounds. Orchestra gets, in fact, put this towards Pizza Tower again. Leo Vardy says my wedding waltz is up next. And then to upvote Octopath Traveler. You got it, Leor. Leor, it's so cool that you're, uh, you're sharing that with us. That you had that as part of your, uh, part of your wedding. Thank you. Dan Barr says this one's for Final Fantasy VI. You got it. Bad Nutrition says, yo. This is for Shin Megami Tensei IV. Thanks. You got it, Bad Nutrition. Duat says, I once listened... By the way, Bad Nutrition, thank you very much for your generous super chat. I really do appreciate the support. Duat says, and not by the way, but like, thank you. I once listened to Man with the Machine Gun on loop for six hours while scrambling to finish end of the semester project. Put this towards Umanika. You got it. And hey, Rubber Man, if you can find a, an OST that's on the list that you'd like to upvote, if you're still here in the chat, that'd be fantastic. BMO McGrim. It says, I'm sure you saw one of the ending songs, Final Fantasy VIII, is called Eyes on Me. It's not listed with the soundtrack as it is attributed to the singer. Put the source Final Fantasy VI. I think we've got that handled, BMO. I think Pikachu has that in. Thanks, Pikachu, for making the playlist. And Danvar249 says, oh, welcome new member to Staunch Supporter. TMAC1313, best supporters ever. So just wanted to say a big thanks to Dan and all the great people here. This is always the highlight of my Saturday. And just listening to great music puts a big smile on my face. On me face. My face. This is TMAC1313. Next says Lil Boost for Sonic Adventure again. Also, you going to watch the Mario movie coming out? You betcha. I'm super stoked. Next. 100% going to watch that Mario movie. It looks really cool. I watched the trailer like three times already. I think you know how stoked you are when uh, when you watch a trailer more than once, so I'm pretty stoked. Act Esper says, a little bit for Final Fantasy VI. You'll love it. Thanks for the streams. You got it, Act Esper. Pikachu says, this is for Sonic Adventure 2. You've got it, Pikachu. All right, y'all. Thank you all so much for joining me on this stream. I will see y'all next time. Take care and goodbye. Bye-bye.